On. Got a question? Ask Tom on Home Show Radio. Home show. This is Home Show Radio live on Facebook and YouTube. Your questions, Tom's answers. Now here's Tom Tynan and Charlie Mosier. That's your questions and my answers. But I have questions for you, but you can't answer because we can't talk back and forth like. Someday when you get your radio show, I promise you, I will be an avid listener and I will ask you lots of questions. <laughs> but over the last 35 years, I've had millions, I don't know how many, quite a few. And I like answering them because one thing I do know, and that's taking care of people's homes. This is Ask Tom Live. I am Tom. And we're going to be here with Charlie Mosier, who is going to help me and he's going to pop on the scene here real quick. But I'm going to tell you first that this whole thing started on radio at Home Show Radio, and you can visit homeshowradio.com and see what we've put together and how this big flower or maybe big push, or maybe it's even a tree now, grew. And I'll tell you more about trees in a minute after I tell you about I am on the air Saturdays and Sundays on Sports Radio 610 in the Houston market. You can listen to the show at homeshowradio.com, and you can listen anywhere you are, no matter where you are in the world, from what they tell me, at least most parts of the world. Uh, maybe he's not some certain countries, but we have me on Saturdays from 9 to 12, Sundays 8 to 11, but trees, we do have tree experts, and that's Danny Milliken and his whole team, and as you can see, there's a bunch of them here, and I do believe we need to take a new picture because he's got even more, especially after our devastating freeze, which we're all still dealing with replanting, replanting around our homes. 
and he can help you on Saturday mornings from seven to nine. Charlie, take it away. No, here we are. Yeah, we're gonna. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna answer questions you've sent us at the website under uh, ask the Ask Tom section. There's a button right there on the home page. You fill it out, you send it in. They come out here, and we also uh, do videos uh, with Tom. He likes to answer questions every day, so we do a new video uh, question and answer it and post it every day at homeshowradio.com, uh, the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, and anywhere else they'll let us put it. But right now, those are the three places they let us put it. That's it, and that's what we do. Uh, somebody's so, calling right now. Anyway. I know. I need to close the door, but I'm afraid to get up. <laughs> no, no, that's so right. deal with We're it. Good. And after we'll the breaker, when you take me off the air, I will shut the phone off like I should have. And it's even down the hall. I can't that's believe right. I'm hearing it. That's all right. It's, it's these it's new just, microphones we have. They're that's very, it. they pick up everything. Super powerful. They are. Yeah, so you anyway. got to pucker up. Don't let anything out that you don't want everybody to hear. Okay. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's, get to, <laughs> let's get to the questions we got this week yes. for you, Tom. All right. First one comes from Phil in Deer Park. He says, I have a leak on my gas fireplace behind the brick. I know it comes after the valve because there's no leak when the valve is off, but we smell gas through the hole when it's on. Will we have to tear out brick to repair this, Tom? I don't think so, no, because most of the... I don't know if it's a gas log system or if he has a log lighter. If you turn it on with a log lighter, you're going to smell gas everywhere because it's got these little holes. If you don't light it, it's just going to put gas out into your house, so be careful with those. And those usually just take in and out, and there's a fitting in there that you screw into. So if it has a gas valve that comes after your valve, there's a, uh, va a valve on the gas logs that regulates the flow of gas into the gas logs. What's going to happen is, is you could have a leak there. That means the whole gas log assembly might need to be replaced or just that one part if they can get it, depending how old it is, if it's a gas log system. But I don't think a bricks will have to be torn out at all. I do believe it's going to be, maybe the connection will be in there, but they'll be able to get in there and make a tight connection in most cases. Worst case, maybe, but you know what? Taking a few bricks out to fix it and putting it back is not as bad as you think, especially if you get somebody who's really good to do it, which would be a chimney sweep. And that goes for all parts of the country. Now, in the Houston area where we are located, uh, Lord's Chimney would be the people to call because they are certified chimney sweeps. But as you go across the country, and I even lived in Lake Placid, I would call certified chimney sweeps to take problems too. You don't call a handyman. You don't call a roofer. You always call a certified chimney sweep. Yeah. And, and you're right. Lord's Chimney is the one that we recommend here in the Houston area. In Houston, absolutely. And, and if and you know if you are here in the Houston area and you listen to Tom any period of time, you know that we have our home show pros. These are people that Tom has vetted and trusts and saves you some legwork in terms of if you're looking for for help around your house, um, <laughs> they can help you. And yes, you find no, uh, find them at homeshowradio.com. You click <laughs> right there. You can see that we, if you scroll it down, you'll see we've got all of them listed right here. And if you go ahead and click on the Find a Pro button, it'll take you in here, and we organize them by category. So you may not know who particular it is that you're looking for, but we have you covered either way. So, all right, let's get to another question here. This one comes from Jeff. He's in the Energy Corridor. He says, what are my repair options for cast iron drain from the kitchen sink to the sewer? He says it's from 1969, Tom, and may possibly be broken. Are there options other than digging and rerouting it? Sometimes uh, we have a, another certified Home Show Pro, TDT, that you'll find on our website that does in-place cast repair. And it's really nice to go to the website. You'll be able to see pictures of it and what they do. They can't fix everything. If it's in uh, areas where you have sweeps or 90s or some kind of T fitting or something, that gets difficult. But in those old pipes, if it's a long line and it's just corroded on the bottom where those old cast iron pipes would get corroded, they can cast in place and they can fix a lot of those issues. So that's worth a call. If they do have to dig under there, if they do have to reroute it, so be it. It happens. But I would certainly make a call and get their, uh, get that question answered. And they can do both. They're a plumbing company. But as far as that goes, that in-place uh, cast system, that's pretty rare. Not many companies will do that, but they do. Yeah, cured in place is pretty incredible. The way the way that works, they they I think what they it take is a, weird. <laughs> they, they put I think they put like a they they cover this membrane with with 
this this goo, I guess it's like an, a PVC goo or something, epoxy thing, and stuff it down in there. Then they inflate the thing, and it pushes it up against the side of the pipe, and they cure it, then they deflate, pull it out, and you got a new pipe. And it, yeah, it's people a have cool to understand that, that it is. It's great. And it's not under pressure. You couldn't do that with a water line. But because this is just gravity flow and there's no real pressure, it's not a pressurized pipe, it's just a drain line, you can get away with something like that, and it works fine. Yeah, Vic was telling me that when they do that, though, they not every not every pipe will qualify because That's it right. depends how much of the crack and if it's a belly or something like that, they can't fix that. And so, no, but yeah, but no, that, no. that's, and that's the thing about TDT. They're going to shoot straight with you. They're like any one of our home show pros in that sense that they want to, they want to take care of you and all that. So oh, in fact, we've, we've, uh, they were, they've done some handy work at our house and, uh, we, um, we had some leaks and they tracked them down and fixed them and, uh, they didn't have to use that system, but, um, we're right now we're remodeling the bathroom and um, they're coming back because they need to fill in some places where they didn't, you know, because you don't have to unless you're going to be moving the concrete around on top of it, I guess. I mean, I mean, if, if you have a tunnel underneath concrete and you move a drain, do you have to backfill under there or can you just is there a way to pour it, Tom, so that you don't have to fill underneath it? No, because the concrete would just fall. I would falling. think so, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, Gary... And not only that, if it's a plumbing pipe, Charlie, then I'll let you continue. Uh, that pipe has to be supported, or you talk about an instant belly. Put a whole bunch of concrete on a pipe, it's going down with <laughs> yeah, it. <I'm> thinking, <laughs> so, yes, it has to be backfilled. Yeah. Yeah, because Gary was telling me that there was a way they put a, something under there, and then they, they put it in and whatever, but I'm yeah. like, mm, I don't want to do it that. It has to stay in place. Right, exactly. So anyway, flopping around. So Sandy got that worked out. I'm just so glad I don't have to do it. You know. I, <laughs> okay, good for Sandy. She, you want the new bathtub, honey? You handle it. <laughs> yeah, that's how it went. One. That's exactly how I said it. You know, and, and she listened. <laughs> yes, dear. All right. So the next question I got for you here um, is from Vara, or Vera, in Attic, the Attic's area of Houston here, and she says. I remember you he hearing you say, Tom, do not clean your air vent. So what do you do with an old air vent? Do I, re do I need to replace it? She says the house is 40 to 45 years old. I, I think she's talking about registers, and I think she's got registers and ducts maybe a little mixed up in this question. Yeah, so let me clear up the, the terminology. An air vent, if it's the registers on the ceiling, I always tell people to clean those. Even if, if you just, you don't even want to take them down, uh, get one of those little brushes on the end of a vacuum uh, hose and vacuum all the dust and stuff off of them just to try to keep them as clean as you can. But I'll take them down once a year or two, depending where they are. The kitchen and the bathrooms need them a lot more than, say, the bedrooms. And, and some of them don't need them hardly at all. Uh, you'll be able to look at it and tell. But just go ahead and clean them and put them back up. There are only two uh, uh, little screws on there. As far as the air ducts, I don't recommend cleaning air ducts unless you have a really specific problem that it's all torn up. They've had big holes in them, rats have put nests in them. I, who knows what could have happened in the air duct system being broken for a lot of years. So those you have to clean up and if you have rats, I would just replace them, but at least get clean ducts. But as far as that goes, not that. But now you have your evaporator coil and your system that needs to stay clean and that's how, how come you change your filters regularly. And once in a while, cleaning an evaporator coil, that's where a lot of the gunk gets stuck. And if it's not cleaning itself or it's very old, a lot of contractors will go in and recommend a cleaning of the evaporator coil and definitely the condensing coil, but that's condensing coil, but that's outside of your home and that just takes a hose, just hose it off and get all the dirt off it at the end of the summer. But the evaporator coil needs to be cleaned once in a while in some cases. In some cases it doesn't. I have a 22 year old system. I've never had to clean my evaporator coils because the system runs right and as you notice uh, in air conditioning time, you have all that moisture that turns to, to liquid, it turns to water and goes out the drain and that's why people get backups and, and their drain lines get clogged, but it washes the coil and if it's working right and draining right, you don't have any problem because it's actually self-washing. It's self-washing, you're talking about- Self-washing. The condenser coil outside. No. The, Evaporator. The evaporator inside. Inside. Right. Because yes. that's, okay, yeah, because that's the inside and the outside. Outside, the, the, you got to clean right. it. Right. The inside is the evaporator that, that's what it, where the gas turns that's to a liquid or vice versa. I forget which way it goes. <laughs> Something right? like that. Yes. Like that. Or it comes in at gas, it absorbs it, and then it 
it takes it out, right? Isn't that how it works? It does absorb the heat and it takes right. the heat to the condensing coil right. and releases the heat out. I'm not getting into the whole refrigeration cycle because every time <laughs> someone explains it to me, I say, okay, I think I have it now. I think I have it's it something, now. I feel the same way. It's something way. you have to do every day where right. you're, it's constantly, it's like a computer or maybe mm -hmm. a video game or something. You can't go once every 10 years and say, oh, I remember. It's not a bicycle. Right. Or an airplane, you know, because... Or but, an airplane. <laughs> no. A bicycle. Well, but yeah, and, 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 and to further confuse you, boys and girls, one side is high pressure, the other side is low pressure. That's correct. So there you go. <laughs> That'll help you yes. out. I, I, all kidding aside, um, I heard, uh, I heard um, somewhere in a land far away, not one of our home show pros, somebody saying that the the condenser coil outside actually builds up dirt that if you don't clean it off and they, they had this stuff they sprayed on it and they hose it off from the inside out to get this gunk off it so it would be more energy efficient. Is that legit? It's not only energy efficient, but what we find in Houston in August is you, we get, I get calls every year, Charlie, that people are saying my air conditioner is not cooling properly. Uh, my pressure switch is blowing on my uh, condensing unit outside. I used to have that happen when I was ignoring it. And I remember if my old friend David used to tell me, Tom, if people would go out there in August and just spray the thing down with hose water and just keep it clean, they would avoid all those breakdowns and all those calls to their servicemen. So the fact that it's running right is a more efficient, correct? And the fact that it's cooling properly means it's getting rid of the heat, but when it can't get rid of the heat, then the efficiency goes down and you're miserable inside because it will not drop the, the, the it won't drop the temperature in your home the way you want it to. Right. I get I get all that. But what this guy was saying is that the the, the film builds up in there and they have this chemical that they spray in there, this foam thing they, they put on there that breaks this up and get, gives you a cleaner system and that's supposed yes. to make it more efficient so and that's just not a hose squirting it's on just it. because it's getting the dirt off i can't take okay. it past the fact that a dirty condensing coil is not efficient a very clean one is if there's parts of the country who knows about the pollution in the air who knows about the parts mm -hmm. of the country they're in who knows about the kind of, of situation these condensing coils are put to some of them are on roofs like in las vegas some are down on the ground where you have a lot of animals you have a lot of pets there's a lot of factors in there. Some you got the grass mowing and the dust coming up, the pollen. Some areas don't get as much rain as other areas. And there's no doubt cleaning something with soap is more is going to clean better than if you just hose it with water. So that's what it comes down to is they're just giving it a good clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's what it, what it comes down to is you have to hire a contractor you trust that's going to do a good job. Yeah, they love yeah. to use the word makes it more efficient because it's easier to sell the client. But it does. I'm not going to it say does. a clean coil sure. doesn't run more efficient than a dirty right. one. So it absolutely does. I don't know what they're charging. $5,000, that would be a ripoff. You know, if they do a part of their system and charge, you know, 40, 50 bucks, I don't know what they're charging for right. their time and their labor. Of course they need to charge for it. Exactly. All right. Got another one for you here. This one comes from Blake in El Campo. He says, I recently had a washer overflow and wanted to know which you'd recommend as a replacement for the flooring, he says, laminate or luxury vinyl. Also, can you explain recoverable depreciation a little for me? Okay, let's start with the floor. Uh, anytime you flood a house, your floor is probably gonna get pretty much destroyed. If you wanted a floor that could handle being underwater, the one would be would be tile. I mean, you put tile in the bottom of swimming pools, you put them in showers, you put it in wet areas that stay wet. So I would not say go with this floor because you're going to flood your laundry room every year. If you have flooding your laundry room every year, you, you got some other issue you got to take care of. So that's why you have insurance and, and you have questions about uh, recoverable depreciation and things like that. But a laminate, they make water resistant floors vinyls are water resistant you spill something you can wipe it up but nothing can be flooded and come out sparkling clean depending on the flood and what's in the water and things like that i don't want you to design for the worst case scenario all the time both those floors if you get a laminate that is okay in wet areas as well as the uh, vinyls they will handle a mishap like you had with your washing machine unless it was super bad and that's when you call the insurance company and talk about 
uh, re recoverable depreciation, big words. And I'm not an insurance uh, 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 expert. Uh, expert, thank you. I can't. Hey, I'm here for you. Two Tom. big words, and I'm done. Uh, expert. <laughs> so uh, I would I would defer that to your insurance agent to explain mm -hmm. that, or maybe Charlie, you have some insight too, because I know you're going through an insurance claim right now. Well, in fact, we are. And, and, and <laughs> you are, I know. <laughs> and and uh, well, actually, you know what? We we decided not to file a claim on that. I'll tell you why. Oh, and, and I mean, and there's I, reasons for that. I'm yeah. I'm not an expert in insurance, but I live with it. And so here's what I've learned. <laughs> you know, there is, I guess, in homeowners insurance, there's a certain amount of insurance you buy for your house on your policy, and that's how much you have for that house. Period. And when you file, start filing claims, you start eating into that insurance. And what this guy told me, this, and this is USAA, I don't mind telling you this. They said, yeah, you can file that claim, but you know, it's gonna be this much and, and that claim is gonna go against and like, and we decided, you know what, after, the, after we looked at the deductible, because we have a pretty significant deductible. Yeah, um, everybody does now. Everybody does, yeah, we, that's why you have $2,000 in the bank. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you can fix it for $2,000, do it. Or just if a credit you, card with a credit limit and put it in a file and pretend you don't have it for that emergency. There it is. You know, exactly yeah. right. And so, um, or the cash is better. But anyway, the, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, it, but we decided that because of the cost of the work that was going to be done after that amount, after that um, deductible, the, the amount that they'd be paying just wasn't worth it. It was just, it, we're just getting into more paperwork and trouble than we needed to. So we're just paying cash to get it done. Now, the depreciable, what is it? Recoverable, uh, recoverable depreciation. depreciation. Yeah, yeah what that stick is. With me all night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. what that is, is there's a gap between the cost to repair it and, and, and the worth of it, right? There's a gap there. And that's called the depreciation of what, what it depreciated to, right? The insurance is going to pay to replace it. After you show the work is done, they will pay that difference. They'll pay that gap in most cases. And that's what that's about. It's In other words, that, that's in there to keep people, Tom, from doing what you always warn. And that is when people go in and they get um, their insurance claim and they go, oh, goody, let's get a TV too. And I'm like, no, not how it works. You got it. That's insurance. breaking the law. That's, that's not It good certainly thing to do. is. And, and, and we're not in favor of breaking the law. That's no, why Tom you're one and of those I. People, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say Tom and uh, I never exceed the speed limit. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna. I got a speeding ticket about two months ago. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that is why when you're one of those people that say, "Oh, I'm glad he's going to jail. Oh, they got that crook. Oh, they got that crook." Don't be a crook because That's you're just gonna. Hard. Somebody's gonna do that to you when they take you down too. Watch out for them. Yep. But the other thing I can yeah. tell you in my own case is I had a house burned down in USAA, which is my company. They maxed out $167,000, and it wasn't enough to finish the house. And they were very upfront with me. It is never enough. You're going to get about 80% of a total rebuild. 20%, you're going to have to find a way through equity, mortgage, money to finish the house. You're never going to get it 100% because that's not why they're there is to make the entire house brand new again. But they do have a certain rate, and I just went through this with my son who just bought his house. You can insure it for this much. And that much only. You can't insure it for more. You can't insure it for less. It has to be that much. And so you've got to be always prepared. Insurance is not the 100%, oh, God gave me a brand new house, end all. And I've lived that before. And Charlie, I'm glad to know what you just told me about the, uh, the lifetime limit. Because I have $167,000 on mine right now. I never yeah, I mean, had another claim but that yeah. one. <laughs> I've, never, I've never heard such a thing. And, you know, and again, now, folks, we are not insurance experts, so talk to no. your insurance people. I'm just telling you, this is what I've learned yeah. by practical experience and, and, and whatever. And while we're on the subject of insurance, i got one more question before we wrap up for today, Tom. But I wanted to talk about insurance um, storm chasers, because we had, ah. you know, what, what could only be described as a gully washer of a, a hailstorm come through the northern area of where we live in the, the Houston metropolitan area, it went up through Tomball and the woodlands and spring and all the way through there. There were people shoveling, you know, golf ball size hail off of their porches. And 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 I'm and our our recommended roofer, Ideal Roofing, our home show pro, Jim at Ideal Roofing, 
is it is it is a mission to him not to have people taken advantage of because I think is I think it was his sister or sister in law got taken advantage of by sister in law. I had this conversation right. with him the other day. He keeps calling yeah. me every three hours. Tom, you should have seen what I saw. You got to tell the people. You got to tell the people. You got to tell the people. Well, He's tell very him. Passionate. I do. Well, I only have weekends, Jim. <laughs> We're telling him here. Don't sign anything. That's what I want to tell everybody because that's what happened to his sister-in-law. You sign something, you sign away your rights to that mm -hmm. contractor to deal with your insurance company. Don't do that. Well, I like this scam. I heard you this past weekend talking about this on the radio. What one of the scams they use is, hey, we'd like to inspect it for free. Can you just sign this so we can have permission to go up there? That's right. You don't Aww. need to sign anything to have permission. Right. Okay, that's why you have right. homeowner's insurance. Somebody's on your roof, falls out. Hey, the insurance company will have to pay for his broken legs and take him to court. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have that. Yeah, because I, I guess once you sign that thing, it's it must be next to impossible to get out of it. It's You always have the three-day right of rescission, the 72 hours, mm -hmm. but nobody ever figures it out in three days. And that includes <laughs> weekends too, by the way. Mm -hmm. So you just didn't realize, well, it's a month later. I, I have three days. No, three days is long gone. <laughs> Can I pick so the three that days? that is pretty standard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just be careful, you know, with roofers. Yep. Not, I mean, Jim's people and, and and other local roofers who have locations and their families are here and everything. That's one thing. It's these storm chasers who come into the market chasing yep. storms from all over. They're here today. They get your money. They do a, a half-assed job, if that good, and they're gone. And you've got no nowhere to go. So that's why you know you want to use a local. And we recommend Ideal Roofing. They're our home show pro. Um, to make sure you get it done right and 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 god forbid there's some challenge or you have a problem with it later at least these people are available to come back and and take care of it and 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 make it right for you so that's the point easy procedure call your insurance company have the adjuster come out he will tell you yeah you have a claim on a roof mm -hmm. no from him go to your phone book go to your website go to our website find th at least three local well-established companies in your city. I don't care. We're talking Houston now, but it could be other cities. This yeah. is just procedure. They come to your home at a time you set because you called them. Not someone that knocks at your door, not someone that calls you. You call them and say, I want to schedule an appointment. I had my insurance adjuster out. Will you come look at my roof? That's what you do. Make sure they have a place of business. Make sure they're established in your community, no matter what the size is. And make sure you're going to get a warranty and talk to them about all of those things. But don't buy anything from someone that calls you. I'm sorry, I just stick to this rule and I've never been taken. And comes to your door. Just say, no, thank you. And close the door. Or don't answer it. Right. Unless they're selling thin mints. Oh, then, then if they're little girls, it's, yeah, it's selling yeah. thin mints. That's my policy. If, if a kid <laughs> yes. comes, I don't care what the kid is selling. If he's yes. a young guy and it's legit, they come trying to sell something, I'm buying it. Because those kids exactly. deserve to be rewarded for going around, right? Yes. So, anyway, and so. Knocking on doors today is a very scary thing. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, I, I, and I, would, I will tell you one more thing about Jim before we move on. Just a real quick yes. thing. He has the coolest toy. I, uh, tool. Um, he can come out and do an inspection of your roof. And he's got this drone that he puts up and it flies over. And this thing is automatic. It flies, it gets the whole roof and it comes down. He can show you, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. And you know, it's your roof. It's not a picture of divots in a roof that you don't know if it's yours or not. And so I think it's a pretty cool toy tool. Yeah. He started out with the GPS satellite pictures that he could do quotes on. But then now he's got toys that give even tools. a closer look. Yeah. The tools that he has a closer look. Yeah. And they can probably look, uh, zoom right into the little dings in the mm -hmm. area. I'm sure those drones are something else today. You know, the difference between tools and toys is who, yes. who, you're, who you're speaking to. Like with my wife, it's always a tool. But with you guys, okay. it's a toy. So <laughs> you go with the wife stuff again. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. However you want to tell her, whatever you okay. want to say. Yeah. I just say, I bought this and nobody says anything to me. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I After just came I just, home with a brand new gold wing. Hey, look, it's mine. Okay. <laughs> that was it. No I like that you set the bar high for us, Tom. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I got a new... It's your life. You want it now. Okay. I mean, I got a, Nikon, I got a new Nikon Z7 II the Good. other day. And, 
you know, I, I think uh, how many of those would have to do to get a gold wing? Let me think. A bunch. So. Mine's about 30,000. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so I'd have yeah. to get, I'd have to get, uh, I think, 15 or 20 of them to, to do that. So, all right. Let's go okay. to uh, our last question for today, kids. It comes from Raquel in Humble. She says, my kitchen vents to the attic. I was told it should vent to the outside via the roof. Is that right? If you get into restaurants, we'll start with the big kitchens. They need to go out. You have to get all the grease and everything out. With a home, it's supposed to go to the outside if, it's in, in, if you can. But the reality is, is most people don't use those vent hoods very much. In fact, most people don't use them at all. And if you use it a lot, I would say it's probably a good idea. If you very rarely use it and it just goes to the attic and your attic is ventilated, I don't see a big issue. The problem is they say if you use it a lot, like in kitchens and in, in, in uh, restaurants, you can have big grease fires. And if you've ever seen one of these things ignite, uh, it is like a chimney fire, which is the reason you get your chimney clean, clean too. It's just like a, a flamethrower coming out of your house. It's scary. But for that to happen in, an, in a residential unit that's not used very much is next to nothing. So I don't like to see a lot of penetrations on the roof, but next time you put a roof on or something, if you want to, you can have it extend through. I wouldn't make a special effort to do it unless you're just cooking a lot and you're using it a lot and you have a gas cooktop, then it's probably not a bad idea just mm -hmm. to be safe. But very rarely will you see homes burn down. You will see restaurants burn to the ground. Barbecue places burn to the ground because they don't keep those things clean. But homes, not so much. Yeah. Uh, some restaurants, uh, that's part of their business model is having a fire. Just... <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> I won't say anything. Uh, no, we're, li we're leaving there. We're going to file that under wife stories. Okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's, I'm done with that. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to do those. All right. But yeah. And, but so this, this, this vent hose or hood, the, you know, the, the, the pipe or whatever you call it that's going up into the attic, Tom. So where, when you build, where would you lead that thing to? We just take it up like near the ridge vent, hook it off and that's it. Not with one of those. If I was building a new home, we would vent it to the outside. I don't want this person to lose sleep. I don't want them to be scared. Okay. Uh, I want them to know the reality of the situation. It might have been there for 35 years or hasn't been a problem. They probably used it maybe one year out of 35 if they use it at all. When somebody has a little smoke something going on in the kitchen, most people just don't turn them on that much. So when the time comes for a new roof, it's not a bad idea. Go ahead and penetrate and have it done really well. I would not go in there and start chopping the roof off because I'm all of a sudden scared of something that's been there for so many years. Uh, I want the reality, and that's the way I'm going to answer my questions. Just keep it in mind on your next roof and talk to your roofer about venting through. And that's, and, and that's one of the things you get with Tom. You know, we've been together for coming up on, I think it's coming up 30 years for the two of us, but um, I, I don't, I don't like to do that math because then, you know, I've, then I, I think know, no kidding. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine today. We were on a two day zoom meeting with some of my uh, business partners. Oh. And, yeah. And this one, yeah, I know. And it's like, I couldn't wait to come here and do this with you. Um, <laughs> so, but, but you know, he has, he has dark hairs. Look, I'm getting some gray here in the front. I said, it leads to this, but, <laughs> yeah, um, kidding. but yeah, but the point is, is that, um, over the years working with Tom, one of the things that, that I found and, and that you, you've probably figured this out by listening to him is he explains things in real world terms. You know, you, some of these people who do this on the radio or TV, they give you these perfect answers under perfect conditions. And, and, and we're going to be doing this. Yes, I am in my office. I'm recording a show right now. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a show right now. I'll be with you in a minute. OK, anyway, I'm a popular guy here today, Tom. <laughs> Hey, I got a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Mr. President. I'll be right with you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, point okay. is, Tom well, explains he's asleep it. asleep by now. In real, <laughs> especially when this airs. But anyway, the um, we we and and just to give it up. The bottom line is, Tom's going to get shoot straight and give it you in terms you can use. That's what I'm trying to say. And I should. And now I'll just. And now the cow's out of the barn. We're recording this today. We recorded it Wednesday for Thursday. And I know it's two weeks in a row we've done it. I apologize. We've had some conflicts in our scheduling and we just had to do that. We will be back live next Thursday at four o'clock central. Promise. Because 
Danny from our Garden Pros is going to join us next Thursday um, to, to answer right. questions. And we've been uh, stocking them up. And so we, we've got a whole parcel of questions we're going to throw at Danny and see if we can stump him. And uh, and then no stump him. I want his answers. I got a few for him too. So I'm going to throw in at least two of my own. Okay, that'll be next next Thursday at a four o'clock right. Central Time. And then Tom and I'll be together on the radio this Sunday morning, uh, using some new technology. You may want to tune in and see how that works. Yeah, that should be interesting. Uh, yeah, it should it should be interesting because I'm going to be trying. You never and know. My my stepson is getting married this Saturday up in Dallas. That's why I, we had to record because I got a I got a vamoose. And um, and and they're actually they're having their wedding. This is uh, there. This has happened to a lot of people because of COVID. He got. They actually had to get married last year because they were buying a house that they were going to buy after their wedding. But the wedding got pushed back. But the house closing didn't. So they got married, justice to the peace, and now they're having a wedding uh, this Saturday. So Kyle and Amy are a match made in heaven. And I can't wait to go up and see them and um, and uh, and and celebrate their vows with them. So that's what that's congratulations. Going on. And while I'm doing that, Tom's going to be on the radio. Yes, I am. Nine to twelve on Saturday and eight to eleven on Sunday. And tune in at eight on Sunday Central Time. And let's see if our new equipment actually works or if it's a total cluster. We'll see. You know, it's only for thing. 30 minutes, and I'll go back thing, to my yeah. regular equipment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's it only for 30 minutes. That's right. That's right. If you <laughs> sleep you sleep in, you might miss it. Pretty that's much like right. you do with my portion of that show every week, but that's all right. Hey, but I'll tell you what, you don't miss these. We do them. Tom Tom likes to do a new one. So if you want to get your questions on our new our Ask Tom videos, go there, click on that blue button at homeshowradio.com, fill out the form, send in your pictures, and we'll put them here. And then next Thursday at four o'clock central, you can actually put your questions in the in the the comments area down below and uh, we'll we'll get them on the show. So that's that's what I got for this week. Tom, you got anything more? No, I'm good. I'm, you know, you say you've got your things to do. I just got off an airplane. When I, when Charlie and I just tested, I, I came off drill weekend. I still had my uniform on, on. I'm with the Texas State Guard, and I got one of these looks like, why aren't you wearing your shirt from Charlie? <laughs> I did So not. I told him I got everything ready. I just got in the house. Let me go put my shirt on, and I still have my regular Army tee underneath here. But that's how we do it here at Home Show Radio. We're on no matter what. <laughs> hey, you, you know, you, okay, this is your fault. You brought it up. Um, yes. I, I want to I congratulate one of the newest sailors in the U.S. Navy, my stepson, Grant Myers. He's got, he uh, just came out of boot, in boot camp training, whatever he's that is. He's a SEAL, isn't he? No, he's a sailor. And he is going to be an aircraft mechanic. And they're uh, air. I think aircraft mechanic or something. He's going to be in Pensacola oh. training now. So we're really proud of Grant and um, couldn't be more happy. It's it's great. Those who are willing to serve is what is what makes this Absolutely. country what it is. So and so yes, back sir. to you, back to you, Major Tynan. So no, I'm no major. <laughs> but, <yes. laughs> oh no, you're a major. Thank you. But anyway, we get the show on <laughs> one way or the other. We are both busy people, but we get the show on. And we'll be here live next Thursday. Got a question? Ask Tom on Home Show Radio. Home Show Radio. Free advice from a pro who knows Home Show.